months, starting a new cycle, but the first as world champions, how does it feel being, being able to call yourselves that going into sort of a series? Yeah, we we don't call ourselves that. Um, I think everybody refers to us as that, which is awesome. Uh, it was our goal to win the World Cup. Uh, we managed to achieve that, which is uh, an unbelievable feeling, and it lays down a platform for us to build, you know, for the next cycle. Um, in the interim, we have two T20 World Cups and then a 50 over World Cup, which is probably at the end of of that. And to put this series in context. It will allow us to, you know, build a broader squad. So in in three or four years' time, but also, yeah, sorry, in three four years' time, have a have a quite a substantial squad to, to select from, like we did before this summer's World Cup. Um, but also allow us to look at guys that could be potential candidates for um, the end of the year's T20 World Cup and the the next T20 World Cup as well. Is there any extra pressure on your shoulders now you are world champions? No, I, I don't think so. I think I suppose a year out or a year and a half out from last year's World Cup, we became number one in the world, um, which was an acknowledgement of a, of a, I suppose, performances over a period of about two and a half years. And it wasn't something that we tried to achieve. It, it was a, you know, a result of consistent performances over that period of time and to, and to be recognised with that is great. And I think the World Cup is a similar instance, the only difference is that we, we targeted it and I think that the next three World Cups will will be the same. Um, we'll have to stick to the process by which we're trying to get better the whole time um, and hopefully lead from the front. Um, with that, you know, involves younger guys coming through and testing the guys who hold the positions at the moment. Um, because that worked extremely well for us over the last four years. And do you have a size for tomorrow? I don't. Uh, we've not trained yet, so I, uh, we haven't announced it. Um, so the guys who, who are playing don't know. They have an indication that, that they'll play throughout the series, but the guys don't know, so I'm afraid I'm not. John, yeah, go ahead. Do you think it's possible that you might uh, remain... I mean, you're speaking about two, you know, two training running World Cups, and 50 over World Cup in India in 23. Is, that, is it possible that you'll, you'll still be captain then? I mean, what about... I haven't looked that far ahead. Um, I've looked at the next two T20 World Cups and I feel in a good enough space right here and now uh, to be able to say I'm, I'm hoping to be here for both of them. Um, things change um, when you make decisions to, to stay on or to continue majority of the time that decision is taken out of your hands. So for me it's, it's a matter of focusing on this year's T20 World Cup doing the best we can to put ourselves in a position to, to try and win it um, and then look beyond that as well. You have the, the kind of drive to push the team forward and your confidence in, in your own form as a batsman to think of the next two teams. Yeah, you? absolutely. I think over the last four years, four and a bit years, I've been in the best form of my life. Um, I think with the, the level of experience that I have now and I suppose growing in confidence as a leader, it's allowed me to, to be the best version of myself. Um, and certainly making this, the decision towards the end of last summer, things became clearer and more evident when I had time to take a break and, and sit back and reflect a little bit. And certainly coming back from New Zealand from the five T20 internationals, with the way that I played and the way that I felt, um, both mentally and physically, I felt really good. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Just, uh, you talk about the World Cup being so far away still now. Is it about setting small goals for the side and, and get, get, being that the motivation, like coming to South Africa, being 2 0 after the last time, but going down 3 2 and, and coming back in now, winning a three, uh, three match series? Are those the little motivations that the side needs to, to keep going? Till? No, not at all. I think the motivation for the side is, is to stake your claim for that final 11 or 15 man squad. I think we've, we have guys. I think we're into the early 20s now, guys that we could select from within any given 11. And certainly the most recent tour to New Zealand with the T20 internationals, we, we almost took a second string side and, and they exceeded every expectation that we had out there. So that was a brilliant exercise. I think we'll see that a little bit throughout this series, but certainly uh, the recognition of guys coming in and taking opportunities is, is very important for us and not so much the scoreline. Looking at the South African side, it's a very young side. Uh, uh, are there a few names that you, you know, that you don't know in that side? 
Mm, not really. Uh, there's not many names around the world that people haven't heard of, and if you haven't heard of them, there's normally footage um, that our analysts bring up. So um, we have done our homework. I think a lot of our performance in the series is going to be about ourselves, and that's not being selfish. It's been, it's been driven and motivated to, to try and perform and execute our skills that we believe are hopefully good enough for a majority of the teams uh, around the world. Yeah, I, I was surprised by how high the standard was. Uh, I didn't know a lot about the South African domestic um, tournament at the time, given that it, it had been postponed the, the previous year. Um, but the guys that have come back and played in the most <laughs> recent season of it, again, said the standard is really high. The Richie Christian will finish with the chairman. Yeah. I mean, four years ago, I was made of planning for the side. Has there been less need as, you know, the situation you're now to, to actually go ahead and look and plan? Do you just let the momentum of last year carry on, or have you looked at the templates for changing what you do? I think looking back at the template that we used, probably the most beneficial thing when it came to selecting guys or performing guys was uh, not focusing on peaking at a particular time. It was uh, you focus on you know finding opportunities to give guys when you can, both with rest and young guys coming through because the competition for places was so high when it came down to selecting the final 15. I think using that mantra throughout the next cycle of three World Cups I think is really important and not being overprotective of resting your either senior players or your best players or getting guys in and around the group because ultimately we don't know how good people are going to be until they get exposed um, and we don't know a lot about people until they play so being as open-minded as we can um, with selection and, and I suppose recognising performances that the guys are putting in around the world and at home is, is important. Tomorrow you'll, you'll expose numbers five and six, which is where Stokes and Butler bat. I mean, that's quite, whoever bats there, that's quite an onus on them, isn't it, to, to be able to, do they, do they try and play in that way? Do they try and, do you play a different way? You know, no, they they play their own way uh, within the framework of our game plan, which is playing positive, aggressive, smart cricket. I think uh, leaves a lot of creative imagination and individuality for guys to go out and, and play their own way and make their own decisions. And until that changes or doesn't suit us, we're, we're sticking with that. But within that framework, it allows guys to play within their own way. Chris, um, we see in lots of sports kind of. The greatest teams, those who create a legacy, are able to come back after winning a major trophy. How do, how do you think you guys can do that and retain that hunger for kind of having that winning, winning habit, I guess, after what happened in July? Yeah, I think it's. I think it can be a challenge. Um, certainly, given the drive and the age group that we have of the, the, the our most senior players. I don't think for one instance that guys are, are taking the position that we're in for granted, but also they look further beyond winning one World Cup. Um, and I think days like the, the T20 World Cup final 2016, um, losing down here in the fashion that we did the last time we were here, uh, really do contribute to you know creating that drive moving forward. And I suppose recognising that things don't last very long forever and realising that we do have a special group of players together and trying to make the most of it is, is extremely important because sides over the years have had unbelievably great individual players but actually haven't won a great deal. We're very fortunate to have won something but that drive forward is extremely important. Um, Owen, um, here when you Uh, Quinny's a guy who bats at the top of the order. He's one, he's one of the best players in the world at the moment. He's very destructive. Um, so, so leading from the front, obviously, is is how he's going to uh, look to do it. Um, how he leads in the change room, we, we won't know. But, you know, uh, like I mentioned before, a lot of this series for us and the T20s is going to be about how we perform and execute what we're trying to do.